G'day guys, welcome uh, to another video. Uh, unfortunately for this video, we're actually on our front lawn. Um, we are back from a fair bit of travel and I thought it'd be a perfect time actually. I've been thinking about this one for a while. Um, so the situation is you've been searching everywhere for the type of caravan you want, the manufacturer, the layout, the length, all of those sorts of things. And then next minute you're presented with this long, long list of uh, extras that you've got to look at and consider and obviously pay for, for the build of your van. So what I'm gonna do is run through our van. Uh, we spent about 10 or $11,000 in terms of optional extras. Those prices are, and prices I'll quote throughout the video are quoted on uh, what Jawa charge, which I actually think is quite modest compared to some of the stories I've heard from uh, people who bought other vans, particularly Australian made vans. So let's uh, have a look at, firstly, Things that we did, which I probably wouldn't bother doing again, and I'll step through those and why. Then I'll have a look at things that kind of, yeah, whatever, we did it, it was good, but I don't know whether I would or I, I would, who knows. And then we'll go through the things that we absolutely must, I think, is an absolute must uh, in terms of the modifications that you do to your van. So let's have a look firstly at the things that we wouldn't do again. So the first thing that we wouldn't do again, and people have mixed opinions on this, and it's nothing to do with the quality of um, this particular piece of equipment, and we just didn't use it, um, probably because of my awesome amount of skills. But um, the thing that we wouldn't do firstly is a Safety Dave reversing camera. We've got ours mounted just under the number plate. Let's go over to the car and I'll talk through why I wouldn't do it again. Let's go. So the talk about the safety, Dave, is whether you use it only as a reversing camera, which is what I was using it for, or whether you actually are going to use it to monitor the traffic that sits behind you whilst you're travelling down the road. The reason I don't you well, there's a couple of reasons why, uh, one, I don't recommend the safety, Dave, uh, in terms of an essential modification to your van, um, is that it's, it's cumbersome. So in the world of wireless connections to basically everything these days the safety dave camera still requires one of these uh, piggyback cables which runs between the car and the van and um, for me when you've got your um, anderson plug for charging your batteries while you're driving you've got your breakaway cables you've got your safety chains you've there's something else that i'm forgetting about um anyway um on the back of the van it, it, this is just another thing that's dangling down towards the road, albeit that this is quite a good quality piece of kit. Um, I just see it as, as, as a bit of a pain. Um, the other thing is when you install the safety dave on your van, you have to install the, uh, the monitoring unit within your car. And if you come closely in here, Mavo, what I've tried to do is tuck it away nice and neatly, which it certainly is. But if I was using this for other than a reverse camera, and what I do when I, the one time I did use it as a reverse camera is I just sat it down here near the gear, gear lever. Um, you have to have this mounted in the car. Now it comes with mounting kits and those sorts of things, but my dash is already super cluttered. We've got the Blackview um, dash cam here, got a GoPro mount, we've got my tire pressure monitoring system and those sorts of things. So. This to me is just cumbersome, big, and kind of in the way. Um, there's nowhere in the BT50 to really mount this neatly and out of the way, which is why I went for it, um, the installation inside of this. So um, when you think about the Safety Dave camera, I think it's about $1,500 for all of the kits and components that run from the camera on the back of the van all the way through to this installation, including all of this stuff. Then you're also looking, if, you go, if you're not confident and proficient enough to install these things, yourself within your car, you've got the van side install and then you've also got the car side install um, that you want to, that you're going to have to do. So if you're paying someone to do that, you know, for a few hours of labour these days, it's about 450 bucks. So you're looking at, you know, two to two and a half grand for a safety Dave. As I said, I've used it once. These vans are really easy to reverse. Um, so just be really confident. Oh, and I've also got, I've also got the famous Mavo uh, who gives me directions while I'm reversing, which is super helpful. So um, yeah, I just, um, I just don't think it's worth the outlay and I'd be putting the money um, that you spend in something like this into the things that I'm gonna talk about later in the video, which you absolutely think are essential. So let's move on to uh, the next thing that we did in the van, um, which I wouldn't do again. 
So the next thing that we wouldn't do, and this is again back to personal choice and how you use your van and those sorts of things. Other people would think that this is an essential piece to do, but we did, and it's not a very expensive one, we put some extra money into upgrading the head unit that comes standard in these Jawa vans. So we've gone for a Kenway, a Kenway, a Kenwood single din um, head unit. Now, I will say that this uh, produces better sound than the, um, the standard uh, Chinese head unit that came in the van. However, we just did not use this while we were on tour. The reason we didn't use it is when we're camped up and we've got the awning out and those sorts of things, we use our little portable speaker whose name is Shazza um, and we just Bluetooth our phone into it. The thing about um, the fixed speakers on the van is if somebody's in, if Danielle's inside watching telly, I'm outside, you've got to muck around with the balance and the fading and that sort of thing to get the sound only outside. And then because our van is relatively small, even the music coming out of the speaker, which is mounted on the side of the van, which plays outside, is interrupting her TV viewing inside. So I grab a little Shazza, whack her in my buddy um, camp chair, and um, again, nothing wrong with the quality of, uh, of a Kenwood head unit. It, it works quite well, but it just doesn't suit our style and it's money that I would reinvest in other things to do with the van. So the first thing in our list of things where I consider them to be, you know what, that was all right. It was money spent and, and we got what we thought we'd get out of it. Um, would we do it again? Eh, not sure. Maybe I probably would, but anyway, I'll talk through this one. We invested about 750 bucks in upgrading our standard TV into a smart TV. This is a sphere 24 inch. Um, smart TV, it has a DVD player attached to it. God knows why they still make those because I don't think anybody watches DVDs anymore. But oi, I guess, oi, oi, I used it twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe <laughs> I did watch it twice. And I, I guess if you're completely out of coverage range, you haven't got anything that you can Wi Fi hotspot with, maybe a DVD is a good idea. But anyway, um, the reason I say that I don't know whether I'll bother with this, uh, there are a couple. Number one, we didn't really watch that much TV, although when State of Origin was on or big sporting events and those sorts of things were on, even though I'm usually disappointed by the results if it's the Wallabies or the New South Wales Blues, is that um, you, you want to have a TV running. Now, the, the, the smart TV is amazing in terms of all you need to do is hotspot off your phone or your iPad or any internet connection that you can get. The challenging part is, though, with our TV setup. When you get more and more remote, you don't, the antenna on the roof doesn't pick up your normal TV stations. So you think, oh, well, I'll use a smart TV. But the thing is, you're a bit more remote. So unless you've got Starlink or um, a Wi Fi Go or something like that, you're generally going to be in an area when you can't get TV, your internet connection is going to be pretty dodgy as well. So um, whilst that wasn't the case all the time, um, did find that we were limited by how we could use a smart TV, again, by the reception in the areas that we were in. And even when you're in a town that's well established, there's lots of houses and those sorts of things there, a lot of the holiday destinations, the, um, the cell capacity in the mobile towers is set up for the 2,000 people that live there. And in holiday times or holiday seasons, there's 20,000 people there. So the capacity is so shot that the towers basically don't work very well anyway, particularly for data. So again, great quality piece of kit. Pitch is great. Um, it works great when we've got good TV signal and the Wi-Fi um, connectivity to our smartphones and that sort of thing also works really well. The challenge is when you really need it, some of the time you can't use it because you just don't have um, that internet connectivity. I would love to have had Starlink. Um, if you don't know what Starlink is, have a look at it and do some Googling. But I think that would have changed the predicament on this. But anyway, um, talking a lot. Don't know whether it's worth it. A lot of people go the standard TV as long as it's got a, um, a uh, not a USB port, a HDMI port. They use a Chromecast or something like that in it or an Apple TV. You could go that way as well, you know. Uh, costs are around about the same as what we spent on the TV anyway, so um, probably yeah, I don't know. Take it or leave it. It, do, it doesn't float my boat, but maybe I liked it. So there you go. So is it in or out? Uh, oh, would you do it again? Yeah. Ah, okay. All right. I'm, <laughs> well, I don't have a say anyway. So there you go. <laughs> All right. So the next modification, where I'm, I'm not 100% sure we would do it, whether we'd do it again. Probably to do with the fact that our van's only 13 foot long and this sink is our only water source inside the van. If you had a kitchen inside your van, maybe this is a, um, 
probably moving more towards I definitely do this particular modification. But anyway, let's have a look at it. Um, we installed a Thirsty Nomad water filter, a $350 upgrade via Jawa. We, we did this one again um, before we received the van. Um, it filters our um, drinking water. We fill up our drink bottles from here, whether we're on mains water hookup or whether we're on tank water. Um, and um, I just, I don't know whether we do it again because we also, and we didn't really know about these things um, before we um, set out on our venture, but for about a hundred bucks, this inline water filter actually goes into your filler hose. It sits between the van and your water source. So whether you're filling up your um, water tanks for off-grid stuff or you're connecting through the mains pressure connection on the side of the van, this sits in between the water source and the van. So what I really like about this, and we actually used to run both in um, simultaneously, but when you're filling up in the outback, you're never 100% sure how good the water source is. This is at least doing its best job to filter it before it goes into your tank. Now, if it's removing minerals and those sorts of things before it goes into your tank, it's meaning that your um, plumbing and your tanks are going to last longer because you're not introducing, you know, um, corrosive or high levels of minerals and those sorts of things. So I would recommend getting yourself one of these, Caravans Plus or one of the online camping stores, 100 to 120 bucks. Um, so highly recommend these. Thirsty Nomad, there's nothing wrong with it, although it did restrict the water flow out of this tap a little bit. Um, but as I said, if you had a van where you had an indoor kitchen, yeah, um, we're using it a lot, then maybe maybe it is a good investment. It, it didn't cost a great deal of money, so I'm not disappointed that we did it. I'm just, just an, a, another one of those again where I go, oh, I don't know whether we do it again. What would you do, hun? Yeah, I agree. I don't think that we would need the water filter in the sink. In the sink. When we when got this. this one. Yeah. Yeah. But again, we discovered that on the road. Yeah, before, after we picked up the van. All right, so let's move on to a couple of things that I think were absolute bargains and money extremely well spent. All right, uh, I have spoken a little bit around this, but not in so much detail in other videos, but I 100% would recommend anybody to make sure that you upgrade your batteries to lithium. And you also, if your standard inclusions, and we're really lucky in the Jawa that in a drive running gear in terms of your DC-DC charger, your um, battery charger, and also your um, your inverter is is all in a drive running gear. So in terms of standard inclusions in the Jawa, they're mint. Many other vans, particularly in the uh, hybrid ranges, do not have the quality of the inner drive gear. Now, in terms of your battery storage, um, we've actually had two different types of batteries in this van. When we uh, took delivery of our van uh, early, uh, late last year, we decided um, to go with a giant battery because in a drive there was a shortage of um, the lithium batteries coming through. And so um, when we had that giant battery, it kind of did its job. But then when we swapped out to the Enerdrive batteries uh, a few months ago, we did see a very clear difference in terms of not necessarily the power usage. Um, they were very much on parallel using the apps provided with these types of batteries. Um, the power usage was very much on parallel. Um, generally when we're running our uh, van at night, when the sun's not up, we're only really running a fridge running a couple of fans and a TV, so not big drawer items other than the fridge. Um, but what we did find, what I particularly found was that for whatever reason, the Enerdrive batteries seem to absorb solar and fill up much more quickly through the day. So um, there is a big price difference from a Jawa upgrade perspective. You're looking at $2,600 for the 340 amp hour giant battery. I think for the 300 uh, amp hours of lithium, it's about 3,800. But um, like a lot of things, you kind of do get what you pay for. So here's our bank of 3,100 um, amp hour lithium Enerdrive BTEC batteries. And here is our Enerdrive setup in terms of Smart Pass Inverter, um, the uh, battery charger, and the DC DC, which sits under here as well. Um, I cannot, I cannot recommend more highly um, the investment in lithium. So I was talking before, before about a few things, probably about three grand's worth of stuff that I definitely wouldn't do again or probably not sure whether I would. I'd be using that money if you had to choose between different things and whacking it into um, lithium. I've also talked about this in other um, 
other videos, we do have an Anderson plug off the rear of this and you can plug in a 200 watt or a 240 watt um, soft panel to bump up your solar performance. That is an amazing investment. So um, thumbs up to the lithium batteries. I'm not bagging the giant battery. It served its purpose, um, but clear, clear cut above in terms of performance, I would definitely be going in a drives uh, or one of the top line bat battery manufacturers if you do get the opportunity. So put as much money as you can into your lithiums. We traveled for nearly 12 months. We had a generator and we didn't even bother taking it with us because of the power um, that we had under the bed here and it performed really well. So thumbs up to lithium, make sure you put your money into it. All right, the next thing that we invested a bit of extra cash in, I think it was about 350 for each fan in terms of the supply of the fan and then the uh, installation of the fan is the Sirocco 2 uh, fan. What I love about these fans is that they draw next to no power and they're actually really super quiet. Um, particularly in comparison to your air conditioner or um, the uh, Mitchell fans that come standard in um, the Jawa that we've got and uh, depending on what your van comes in with standard I'd strongly consider getting some of these. What I love about the Sirocco is that it's 360 degrees rotation. Um, with our little van because it's not so huge um, we only ran two but we put them on either side of the van um, when we're working in the van or you know doing stuff through the day we usually run one to throw the air this way one to throw the air towards the front but when we're in bed at night Mavo's obviously usually colder than me she probably won't even have hers on but I can have mine on one two or three and um, you've almost got your own personalized airflow when you're camping a lot um, and you're off grid you're obviously not going to want to run your air conditioner we can run our air conditioner off our lithium battery um, but you need to have really really good solar availability and at night time you're going to drain your battery relatively quickly when there's no solar so um, thumbs up to the Sirocco 2 fans I would say that these are an essential upgrade particularly if you're touring an awful lot so um, for $350 a fan, uh, I know it sounds like a bit for a fan when you can go to Kmart and buy a pedestal fan for 40 bucks or something like that, but um, they work really well. They're obviously 12 volt and they draw next to no power, so um, a definite upgrade that you should be doing in my opinion. All right, so this is another essential piece. Uh, I would say uh, this was definitely driven by Mavo. I probably wouldn't have uh, gone for this option. It's a $2,750 upgrade. Uh, again, just quoting the Java upgrade prices. You might get quoted, quoted more uh, for others. Uh, but it is a Truma gas heater. Now, there's many debates online around, do I go for a gas heater or a um, diesel heater? I haven't had experience with a diesel heater for this particular van, given the Swiss Army knife um, nature of it. There simply wasn't enough room on the drawbar for a diesel tank, which um, basically forced our hand and we went for the Truma gas heater. But for the same price as a Wabasco diesel heater, we've found that the, the Truma gas heater has been amazing. So quickly just um, coming over and I'll show you how it's set up within our particular van. Just underneath our little dining settee, uh, underneath the chair, you can see the actual gas heater unit sitting right here. And then if you bring the camera down here, maybe you can actually see the uh, unit here. It's really easy to operate from here. I haven't got the gas turned on, so I won't actually uh, operate it. But what I love about this piece is that it warms the van up from, you know, five, six degrees to a very comfortable 20 degrees or 24 degrees, if Mavo said it. Um, within about five minutes, um, the unit itself, when it fires up and it's first getting up to, to a, a decent heat, is a little bit noisy, but um, once it's got to its comfortable operation temperature and it just sits there in sort of a maintain maintenance mode, it is absolutely dead quiet. You can virtually can't hear um, the gas heater when it's working. It works really well in a smaller van, our space as well. We're only 16 foot when we're opened up. Um, but what do you reckon, Mavo? Is this one that you love? Oh my God, so loved it. It's an absolute must. We used it so many times and we actually uh, used it quite a few times for the whole entire night. Yeah. All so, the way through the night. And they're actually really gas efficient as well. We, uh, 
we, on a recent trip, uh, we had what I think was about a half empty gas bottle. We probably used it four or five nights in a row in amongst with our cooking and our hot water and those sorts of things when we're off grid. And that gas bottle after seven or eight weeks on the road is still sitting on the front of the van. I haven't had to switch it over. It must be close to being empty, but uh, in terms of the cost to run this stream of gas heater, I've actually been um, quite surprised at how gas efficient it is. So uh, a thumbs up to that one. Now onto our last piece. So the last piece, which I think was absolutely a great investment and I can't say that I've had experience in this particular van without it installed because we had it installed from new, but um, considering how much corrugation, how much dirt road, how much, um, how much variable conditions that we did while we were doing our lap, the, the Dometic Dust Reduction System or DRS was an absolute steal at $1,000 installed when we picked up the van. Um, the, the system is uh, doesn't run on electricity or 12 volt or anything like that. It purely works with a, an outside unit on the roof of the van. I'll take a photo of that and just add it in here. And this is what the inside unit within our van looks like. Now, given the real estate or the lack of real estate and, and everything that's included in our van, we haven't even got this installed in the most optimal position. They actually say with the dust reduction system that it should sit on the first third of your van in terms of closest to the drawbar. However, probably again, because when our van's packed down to um, 13 foot, there isn't a great deal of internal space in here, but this unit has worked perfectly for us. We've pulled up with so much dust and dirt and that sort of thing on the outside of the van, opened and, and our back, as you've probably seen, the back of our van opens up for the bed to push out. Um, we've had like literally in one tiny section of the van over here, about enough to cover just over a 50 cent piece. And that's the only dust that we've had in the van. It, to be really honest, when we're parked up in a caravan park that might be dusty or a campsite that might be dusty and we've got all the windows open, we get far more dust into our van um, than we do when we're traveling. So um, the Dometic dust reduction system, I will be installing in every van that we own in the future. Just really quickly, a hot tip, if you're doing a big lap like we did, um, grab yourself a spare filter cartridge. Um, we found it, I can't remember, was it Darwin that we found, finally found a... Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and they're like it. 50 bucks or something like that, but um, after we did the Gibb River Road, obviously there's a huge amount of dust on that. We did find that it had done its job beautifully, but the filter really needed changing. So um, for a thousand bucks, not having to pull up and pull out a vacuum or a blower or a sweeper or a cloth and those sorts of things, it is, it is awesome. So um, again, can't give you the comparison of what it was like beforehand, but it, it is amazing. Quickly just show you what it looks like up in here without hitting my head. Simply just pull that down and your filter cartridge sits up in here. You can pull it out. Oh. You just put your fingers on these little butt, little levers Sounds here funny. and then it just comes out like that. And it's just, oh, see it's a little bit dusty. It's simply just one of those. Great invention. And then it just pops back up. Super simples. So that's the rundown of um, the extra money that we put into the van. There's just a couple of things that I want to round out with um, because uh, the Jawa is really nicely specced up, particularly for, in my uh, opinion for its price point. Um, but a few other things in terms of uh, other vans that are available, which these may not be standard inclusions, but I'll talk into. So first one is sitting right above me. It is, um, we've got a Dometic um, air conditioner. It's a Harrier Light 2400. Um, given the smaller space in our van, we only really needed the light model. Um, when we're on 240, and as I mentioned a little bit earlier, with uh, the battery setup that we've got and the capacity that we've got, we can jump this when we're on, uh, when we're off grid and we've got good solar conditions. But um, this this air conditioner has been brilliant. We've been in 40 degree heat uh, up around Broome, um, particularly when the humidity was building, when we got some unseasonal rainfall and those sorts of things. And the van, providing you get the the aircon on early in the day, um, or even. Sometimes we did leave it running all night, not very often, but sometimes. And we, we're not the type of people that need um, air conditioning all the time. But um, 
yeah, I, I think it's it's a, if it's not a super expensive uh, upgrade to the van that you're looking at, I would consider making sure that you've got a decent quality air conditioner. Dometic gear, um, all made in China these days, but it is good quality, um, and uh, we've had no issues whatsoever. It's been really, really good. So the only th other thing that I wanted to mention is something to consider, and this really comes down to uh, your van manufacturer and what inclusions are in their standard, um, but if, if you find that you are limited in terms of USB points and 12 volt sockets and even GPOs if you've got a decent inverter and electrical setup, it, making sure that you've got adequate, uh, if not significant amounts of um, USB points within your van. We, we, we run a drone, we run GoPros, uh, we run two phones, iPads and all of those sorts of things and it's only the two of us, computer, it's only the two of us. But anyway, um, what I love about the Jawa and its standard electrical work rough out is um, there are a huge amount of 12 volt and USB points around uh, the van. Internally, the Jawa actually, or the Infinity 13, has six um, USB, six different USB outlets, There's some over here as well. Um, and then uh, also in your drop down kitchen uh, in the little tray table pull down section, there's a couple in there as well, as well as some in your tunnel boot um, where your fridge goes as well. So um, just a consideration and a, and a call out, probably wouldn't think about it when you're actually configuring your van and, and making a decision on your purchase. Make sure you've got your uh, electrical fit out done. So that um that's basically it guys hopefully this video has been helpful for you as i said we've been on the road for nearly 12 months so we've thoroughly tested all the things that we've talked about in this particular video if you have questions on anything please whack them in the um in the in the comments and i'll come back to you um and good luck making a decision if you haven't already on the type of van you've got all the optional extras that you're going to do um we're going to be in the boat uh relatively soon again because we are probably going to upgrade this van relatively soon we love it we've absolutely loved it to death but um we are heading back to work for a little while and going to be having shorter adventures just in the car and swag so uh yeah um hopefully it helps you cheers guys